The triad. It is an important configuration that we find in many belief systems all around the world. Now, the triad is a term that is used to refer to a group of three deities, usually organized into a family system, including a father, mother, and a child, but can vary wildly based on other circumstances, including alliances of cities or nations, natural events and occurrences, or political alignments. But the desire is to illustrate the comprehensiveness that these gods played in a particular role. In ancient Kemet, three also meant plural. The number three, of course, is considered itself to be a sacred number because like its root nine, it represents completeness, perfection, the power of God, holiness, and harmony. All these things that factor into various components of Kemetic belief, centered around nine being the end of the cycle. There are many well-known triads, and we're going to talk about each of these individually, but I did want to highlight them on a group basis before we move into smaller videos. The first and most famous is the Osarian triad, or that of Abydos, but it represents Osar, who is the husband, Aset, the wife, and Heru. This is probably the most recognizable configuration of a triad in the Kemetic belief system. But there were others of equal importance and in some staggering powers, as we see with the combination of a god of the dead, the goddess of magic, and the son of the avenging power. In Thebes, there was a triad that consisted of the very powerful Amon, Mut, and Khonsu. And they played a very important role, obviously, as Thebes was one of the larger and more prominent cities in the early kingdom. In Memphis, there was Ptah, Sekhmet, and Neferten. And of course, we know the awesome power of Ptah, who in this role is seen as the ultimate creator, that he creates everything, including the cosmos. Now, Sekhmet remains in her role as being a powerful sky goddess where she derived from, and Neferten becomes an aspect of the moon, consolidating massive power among those three. Likewise, in Dendera, there was Horus, Hathor and their son Ehi, another combination of father, mother, son. Of course, Hathor being the sky goddess, Horus being the reborn fire or sun god, and their son Ehi being a representation in some personifications as being uh, chaotic energy or new energy. The typical triad represents the minimum division of three persons in the form of a creator god. They represented the aspects of a singular god. The two male gods, in examples of Amon and Khonsu, were each aspects of each other, representing the same god. Amon is reborn as Khonsu, and Khonsu is the young Amon. Amon is also the adult or, or Khonsu in an internal cycle of life and death. The physical element of the triad is not only the wife or even the daughter of the old god, but also the mother of the young god. And because Amon and Khonsu are one and the same god, Mutt is simultaneously mother, wife, and daughter under the context of this representations of consolidated power. Now, occasionally triads put extra emphasis on the female element. And for that, we would look at the triad from Elephantine, which consists of Kanum and two goddesses, Satit and Anuket. And other types of triads consisted of three male deities, such as during the New Kingdom triad of the three state gods, Amon, Re, and Ptah, each being represented by their sacred cities, being Thebes, Heliopolis, and Memphis. Now, the true power of understanding of the overall context of the triads will be shown in the breakdowns of each of the specific sets. And we'll look at those beyond the comedic beliefs as well, as we see triads very prevalent in Greek mythology, and I think Hindu and Brahmanic beliefs as well. If you have more to add as I start down this venturous road, please do so in the comment section. But as always, I ask you to hit that like and subscribe if you enjoy the videos, and hit that notification bell so you'll be in the loop when new videos drop.